I'm John Morgan from the Pennsylvania Progressive.com. I'm here in Plains, Pennsylvania today with congressional candidate Matt Cartwright. Matt is an attorney here in Scranton Wilkes-Barre area. He's running in Pennsylvania's 17th congressional district against Blue Dog Tim Holden. I sure am, John. Thanks for coming down and visiting us in, in Plains. It's a, it's a nice day for a ride, and I appreciate that you took it. It was a, it was a nice drive up here. I enjoyed coming up through the mountains, and uh, uh, my family is from this area, so I'm, I'm used to coming up to Wilkes-Barre. Um, tell us some about your background. You're an attorney. I am, John. I've been a, a trial lawyer for the last 25 years. Uh, it's something I've been proud of. I've been sticking up for regular people, working families, and uh, middle-class people in courtrooms all over uh, eastern Pennsylvania, and particularly no northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, fighting against insurance companies and huge corporations. I've sued polluters on behalf of families who've had their wells contaminated, um, and uh, it's work I've been proud of. Uh, 25 years I've been doing that kind of work, and uh, I've learned a lot about how to stick up for people and stand up to powerful interests along the way. Which is what you're doing now uh, with help from friends and family. Uh, you're married with uh, children? I sure am. Uh, my better half is Marion Munley, and that remains the best decision I've ever made. Uh, we got married in 1985 when we were both still in law school. Uh, we were in law school in Philadelphia. Uh, we practiced a couple of years in Philly, and then we came to northeastern Pennsylvania to join her dad's law practice, Bob Munley. And most of, most of what I do right in the courtroom, I learned from Bob Munley. Uh, and over the years, uh, we've developed the practice. But our, our plan was to plant our roots right here in northeastern Pennsylvania, raise our boys. We have two boys. Jack is 19 and Maddie's 16. And uh, we hope we've passed on good values to, the, to those young men. And we're here in your campaign office. You're opening two new campaign offices this weekend, correct? In that's, Wilkes-Barre and Scranton? That's right, John. You're here in the Nerve Center in the sumptuous downtown Plains headquarters, which is where we do our back office work. Uh, we do our fundraising here. We do a lot of our planning. Uh, it's a big job running for Congress. Uh, we're talking about reaching 705,000 people. Um, and uh, certainly the focusing on the Democratic voters in, in that region right now. But it's a district that, that goes from Carbondale all the way down to Easton. And uh, uh, planning and running a campaign like this, you need a good staff. And, uh, and this is our headquarters. Yes, we're opening uh, Scranton and Wilkes-Barre offices uh, this weekend. They've been open, but we're doing the grand opening formal ceremonies this weekend, having some fun with that. And we have an office in, in Easton uh, on, at uh, 355 Ferry Street in Easton, uh, which has become one of my favorite places. Easton is a charming place. If you haven't been there, make sure you visit. It's a, it's a great place to spend some time and mill around the downtown area and have a coffee and, and get to know the people there. You have a map of the district up here on the wall. I'm just going to kind of go over to it uh, a bit for a second. Yeah, let me show you. This is uh, this is kind of a crazy district that the, our friends, the Republicans in Harrisburg, crafted. It starts down here in Schuylkill County, and it in includes all of Schuylkill County. It, it sneaks up here through Southern Carbon County, includes great places like Jim Thorpe and uh, Mahoning, and East Penn, it's got Franklin, and uh, 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 a, lot of, a lot of good Democrats in this area. And then we go up to uh, uh, Monroe County, and, uh, and, and what you see is that uh, it, is it, it goes north through Monroe County, through this sort of little gap here in the Lackawanna State Forest, and then up into Lackawanna and Luzerne counties. So we have, and if you can, if you notice it, it really concentrates on the heavily populated areas of Lackawanna and Luzerne. 
So here's, here's Luzerne down in this area. We go from South Wilkes-Barre up along the east side of the river. We, we, we skip over the river. We include West Wyoming and Exeter. And we've got West Pittston and Pittston and Duryea and Old Forge and Music. We've got Hughestown. Uh, we've got uh, DuPont. Uh, we've got uh, Taylor. We've got all of the city of Scranton. We've got Dunmore, Troop, Oliphant, Jessup, Archibald, Blakely, Mayfield, Carbondale. These are places that I know people because I've been representing them for 25 years in court. Whenever people have a nasty fight with an insurance company or a big corporation, uh, I've, been, I've been there for them and, and uh, these are people that I've been proud to stick up for my entire adult life. So, and, and this is a heavily Democratic area through there, too. It a is. lot of Democratic voters it there. Is. These are the old mining towns. I mean, these are the, the, the families with deep roots in Democratic t traditions, families that, you know, you mentioned Fra Franklin Roosevelt to them, mm -hmm. one of, who was my favorite president. You yes. mentioned Franklin Roosevelt to them, and they remember that he established Social Security. They remember that he invented the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, which needs to be beefed up mm -hmm. in, in uh, Washington. And, given a stronger hand in regulating Wall Street. They remember that he established the Civilian Con Conservation Corps, and they remember that he brought to us the idea that Social Security is a good thing, and that uh, government has a role in standing up for and protecting the weakest and the most vulnerable in our society. I'm a Roosevelt Democrat, and I'm proud of it. Good. So then this this district, it moves down into Monroe County. It has about half of Monroe County. It has a very important thing in Monroe County, and that's the Toby Hanna Army Depot. Yes. I got a wonderful tour of the depot. Uh, Colonel Gibson gave me a good briefing on what's going on there. Do you know that more than 5,000 families uh, have uh, a family member working there? Mm -hmm. Uh, and the work they do is phenomenal. The electronics and the communication equipment that they service and repair there. It keeps our armed forces going and uh, uh, I'm very proud of the work that they do there. And there have been some threats to Toby Hanna for, to close it down, haven't there? It's funny, they are so good at what they do, John, that every time there is a, a BRAC... Uh, mm. a, a, a base closing. All right, a base re relocation program going on, they actually benefit mm. because what happens is on close examination they hold up and, they, and people realize how good the work that they do is. And so what has happened is during the BRAC hearings, what happens is more work comes to Toby comes Hanna. In. From the bases that got closed. Right. And they had one in, uh, in uh, California that they brought a lot of the work to Toby Hanna just because they're so good at it yep. here. And you know, politicians going around thumping their chests about bringing the work to Toby Hanna. It's the men and working work, men and women working at Toby Hanna that are responsible for mm. for their uh, their success all there. Right. Well, then you go down into Northampton County and all the way down to the city of Easton. We do on the Delaware River. So you go from the Susquehanna River to the Delaware River. Well, it, exactly. That's a good way of saying it because we do. It, co it comes over to, uh, uh, to the Delaware in Monroe County uh, it, uh, at the Delaware Water Gap, and it comes all the way down the Delaware River down to Forks Township and then into North, Northampton County's mm. Crown Jewel, which is Easton, which is a marvelous yes, place. I'm and I've gotten to know Easton. I've been there about a dozen mm. times in this campaign. Yeah, I, I kayak the Delaware River down through there. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And, uh, and the people there are phenomenal. We've got some wonderful Democrats mm -hmm. there that I've had the pleasure of getting to know. And uh, uh, Easton is so important that, that I did put a, a campaign office mm -hmm. there, and we've got two staffers there full time. We've also got a lot of volunteers, uh, not only from the, the local Democratic committee, but, but also from uh, Lafayette. Uh, yes, Lafayette a, College. A vibrant, right, a yes. vibrant uh, young democratic club. We also, we also go down and we, we even take a slice of Bethlehem Township here, okay. down the bottom here. So this is an, an enormous district, ge uh, geography-wise, mm. 
but uh, man, a lot of good Democrats. So what's your plan for the primary? Uh, Tim Holden is very vulnerable to a strong primary challenge from his left as a blue dog Democrat. Well, I, that remains to be seen how vulnerable uh, he is, and we will all find out on primary day, April 24, and I urge everybody to come out and vote on April 24, uh, because this is a seat that pretty much will be decided in the primary. Uh, as we saw, there are so many demo heavily Democratic mm. areas in this district that uh, by our calculation, about 56% of the registered voters in this district are Democrats. Only about 32% of them are Republicans. So what that means is that probably whoever wins the Democratic nomination is going to go to Congress. And so we're all in for the primary, and uh, we're trying to do a responsible job of getting our message out to the, the public and let them understand what the differences are between the Cartwright campaign and, uh, the, uh, and Mr. Holden's campaign. All right. What are the main issues that you're running on? Well, it, to me, it, uh, it, it is very clear that there are stark differences between Mr. Holden and me. He's been in Congress for 19 years. Uh, he's been something of a backbencher. Um, uh, but during 19 years in Congress, uh, he's voted for an awful lot of measures that really don't um, square with the, uh, the Democratic program. Uh, and we can talk about those, mm -hmm. but my approach is that a Democrat needs to be a Democrat. You said you're from the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party. I did. And Famous Howard Dean and Paul Wellstone quote. I stole that line, and I'm, I'm proud of it. Uh, and I, I've heard for the, through the grapevine that Howard Dean does not begrudge me <laughs> saying his line. Um, yeah, I'm from the Democratic wing, which just means I'm a regular Democrat. I'm not going to go in there and vote for Republican items. Uh, and we can talk about some of those things. Like the Bush-Cheney Energy Task Force? Well, yeah, let's talk about that. In yes. 2005, uh, there was the uh, 2005 Energy Bill and it's something that we need to know about because uh, it includes something in, in addition to uh, some uh, giveaways to the oil and gas industry in, in terms of subsidies, which I didn't think we needed to be doing, but more importantly includes something that exempts oil and gas companies uh, from revealing what kind of toxins they're using in their extraction process. So, for example, if a company that's fracking is using arsenic, they don't have to tell anybody. That's the law. And that's the law because there's this loophole in that 2005 mm -hmm. energy bill, and, some, and somebody named Dick Cheney lobbied really hard for that bill. Uh, in fact, so hard that they, have, they, have, they now have a nickname for that exemption from the Clean Water Act, and that's the, uh, the Halliburton loophole, they yes. call it. Uh, my opponent voted for the Halliburton loophole to allow these companies to keep secret the poisons that go into the water table and that we need to know about. Uh, that would be one of my first acts in Congress is to co-author and definitely co-sponsor uh, the bill that repeals the Halliburton loophole, we need to make our families safe, not make them at risk from poisons in the environment. And that's a huge issue here in northeast Pennsylvania where hydraulic fracturing is, is exploding. Uh, and more, no pun intended, more ways than one. There actually have been explosions yes. where people got hurt, but you're right. It's a, it's a huge burgeoning industry and there's no indication that uh, the, the, the Corbett administration is going to do anything to slow it down. Um, I'm a, a friend of the Sierra Club, and the Sierra Club has, has dubbed uh, uh, Governor Corbett's work as a mad rush to frack. Yes. Uh, I agree with that. I think that uh, they're going too quickly, uh, that they're not sufficiently taking into account uh, what the, the dangers to the environment are. Um, that gas isn't going anywhere. It took millions of years to, to form, and we don't need to be in so much of a rush to get it out that we need to cut corners on safety and uh, care of the environment. 
Another one of Tim Holden's infamous votes was voting against the Affordable Care Act. He did. And John, I must tell you, that's one of the things that uh, I disagree very, very vigorously with him about. Uh, I didn't like the, the Affordable Care Act myself when it came out. I didn't like it because I didn't think it went far enough. Um, I thought that uh, much of it was a giveaway uh, to health insurance companies. Uh, if you talk to uh, uh, union people, I was talking to the Carpenters Union last week, and they were explaining to me that as a result of the way that bill was drafted, it costs them uh, something like $2 extra an hour for every hour they work uh, for their health care bill. Mm -hmm. uh, where's because of the going? tax on the Cadillac health plans, which generally are the union negotiated, bargained for plans that they gave up wages right. to get. Right, and I, I, I don't like that at all. Uh, so there were a lot of changes I wanted to see in it. But when confronted with either achieving this health care victory or, or, or not, you don't vote against it when push comes to shove. Uh, I thought there should have been a public option, too. Mm -hmm. um, we have to do something to keep the health insurance right. companies honest. But there are so many good things in the bill, children with pre-existing conditions, children can stay on their parents' insurance till they're 26. Expanding health care for seniors. Yes. Uh, uh, expanding health care for women seeking preventative health care services. You don't say no to those things uh, because it's an imperfect bill. You pass the bill and then, uh, and then you, you work to improve it later. And that is my aim, to, uh, to mm -hmm. continue working on improving that bill. Because here's the thing. A lot of people say, well, it costs too much. It costs too much to expand health care. Well, let me tell you something. Health care happens. Okay? People, get, people without health insurance, they, they get injured or, or very ill, they go to the hospital. And the hospital doesn't say, oh, I'm sorry, sir, uh, I don't see that you have health insurance and throw, it, throw you out on your neck. They don't do that. They, they care for the people because the people who work in hospitals, they got into that business because they care about people. So they treat them. And who pays for it? John, the hospital pays for it. It comes out of the hospital. They, the hospital has to absorb that free care that they give away. Well, that's not fair. That's not fair to make hospitals and doctors and nurses pay for that care. And you know what happens when a hospital can't make its budget? I was on a hospital board of directors, I know. The first people that got cut are, are, are the staff, the nurses. That becomes a safety issue for patients. We just had a hospital close in this district, and it's the Marion Community Hospital in Carbondale. That's 250 jobs right out mm -hmm. the window, and that's local care that was available to people in Carbondale that is no longer there. Why? Because we're not doing enough to support health care in this country. And hospitals all across the Commonwealth have been closing or on the verge of closing because of these issues. Yeah, and the answer is beef up reimbursements to, to hospitals mm -hmm. for this care that they're already giving. All right. All right. Um, some of his other kind of infamous votes have been uh, national security related. He supported the Iraq War. He voted against withdrawing troops from both Iraq and Afghanistan. He voted for the authorization to use military force in Iraq. Right. Well, uh, it's hindsight is twenty twenty. Of course. I mean, we were being lied to by the Bush administration, mm -hmm. and uh, you know whether people should have seen through that or not. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to go back and gainsay those things. But I will say this, the uh, National Defense Authorization Bill, mm. NDAA, that came out. Um, Just I, last year. I disagree with that. Uh, and, and we have to talk about these things. Doing away with individual rights in this country is not the answer to terrorism. I, personally, I think if, if we get rid of our own civil rights to go after terrorists, um, that's not a victory. And Tim Holden voted for the Patriot Act. He voted for a warrantless wiretapping. He voted to give immunity to telecommunications companies that were doing the warrantless wiretapping. Uh, he's voted repeatedly to restrict our civil rights. He has. 
Um, that's another thing that brought me out. I have spent my whole adult life sticking up for individual people. If you give away your rights, that means powerful interests can tell you how to live your life. Powerful interests can tell you uh, what you can have and what you can't have, and you don't get a vote. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, the American Revolution was fought over these individual rights. These are rights that were hard won. I mean, it's not just rights, you know, tort rights, it's, it's also uh, uh, collective bargaining rights. I mean, people gave their lives for collective bargaining rights, and those rights are under attack in this country. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, uh, they talk about uh, uh, restricting your rights in case, uh, uh, in case your, uh, for example, your privacy has been infringed. Uh, I disagree with that. I think Americans are entitled to their privacy rights and to give them away without really talking about it and working through the issues, I think that's a big mistake, John, I really do. Well, giving up our freedoms, uh, I believe the, the, the fa famous Benjamin Franklin quote, uh, I forget exactly how it goes, but if you're willing to give away your, uh, your liberty, uh, for security, then you deserve neither. I saw that, and I don't know exactly how yeah. it goes, but I remember but that's that the gist things. of it. So yeah. many neat things that Franklin said. Yes, yes. Uh, maybe our most famous Pennsylvanian. Right. You touched uh, a bit on uh, collective bargaining rights. Uh, talk some about your support for organized labor. Well, you know, uh, the, probably the courthouse where I spent most of my time working is the Lackawanna County Courthouse. And we have uh, a lot of statuary around that courthouse. We have the, the wonderful statue of Tadeo Kosciuszko, the great Polish patriot. We have uh, certainly Christopher Columbus. We have Phil Sheridan. Um, and uh, whether you realize it or not, those are kind of ethnic statues, mm -hmm. okay? And, uh, well, this is a very ethnic area. A lot of immigrants came here. Uh, my, on the Morgan side, uh, I guess great-grandfather came here in 1907 from Wales. Sure. Settled in Plymouth. And, and uh, the Morgan family, they were coal miners. My well, grandfather was a coal miner up here. Well, to me, the most important statue that is behind the Lackawanna County Courthouse is the statue of John Mitchell. John Mitchell was a labor leader who came to this area during the great coal mine strikes about 110 years ago. And uh, what he saw was all of these diverse ethnic backgrounds, and they were at war with each yes. other. The Morgans were fighting with the, the Irish the Kishinskis and, <laughs> and the Poles, and, uh, yeah. And, and the Shaughnessys, and yeah. they were all fighting against each other, and the mine owners were taking advantage of that because if, uh, if they could divide and conquer, then they didn't have to worry about things like pay, paying people a living wage. And they didn't have to worry about whether they were working uh, children in the mines, and they didn't have to worry about how many hours the men in the mines were working. Mitchell saw that and he said, stop this, ladies and gentlemen, stop this internecine warfare between the ethnic groups. You've got to band together and that's the only way you're going to be able to stand up to the mine owners. And I say what he said then is as true today as it was then. We as Democrats have to band together and stop corporate America from taking over this country. Very well said, very well said. Another one of the issues uh, I see front and center in this race is tort reform. Uh, Tim Holden has voted for some very serious bills uh, advocating tort reform. Well, sure. Uh, uh, that uh, I mean, tort reform sounds good, but it uh, it smells bad, John, because what it does is it takes away your right to, to hold people accountable. So, for example, all across the country, there there are movements to immunize industries from responsibility, from accountability. I just heard yesterday that the trucking industry is trying to pass a bill to prevent uh, punitive damages. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't, I mean, the whole point of punitive damages is just to punish companies and to deter them from uh, irresponsible, unsafe conduct. The only way we're in, in, at bottom, the only way we keep our families safe 
from irresponsible corporate conduct is to hold that threat of punitive damages over those companies if they get up to that irresponsible mm -hmm. conduct and people get hurt. So tort reform is a bad idea. It hurts regular people, it hurts working families, and, and I'm against it. Well, I urge uh, anyone watching the video to go out and rent the documentary film Hot Coffee. Uh, they can learn a lot about the, the horrors of tor tort reform. Oh, that's uh, right. You know, John, film. you're right. I mean, uh, people hear, people think about uh, frivolous lawsuits, and the first thing they think about is that McDonald's coffee mm -hmm. case. Well, they go watch, and watch that hot coffee video, and they realize that kind of wasn't frivolous, and that right. lady didn't hardly get anything like the money that people say that, that right. she did, and she deserved every penny. Yes, yes. Uh, one of the bills he voted for was to protect health insurers from lawsuits and class actions. And health insurers, as you know from 25 years being a trial lawyer, probably practice some of the most egregious uh, uh, business conduct in the country. I do. I, uh, you're preaching to the choir now, John. I, I've been fighting uh, not only health insurance companies, but uh, liability insurance companies uh, my entire adult life. Well, what would happen to the, these working people, these average Pennsylvanians, if health insurance companies are given immunity from their most egregious practices? Then there's nothing to stop them from, uh, from continuing to to trample on people's lives and uh, uh, to, to just uh, run rampant uh, over, over people's, uh, you know, uh, people's well-being. The only way for, for people to stand up for themselves oftentimes is to do it in court. Um, and the beautiful thing about court is, you know, there's no law being allowed, okay? Both sides are equal before the law and both sides get an equal opportunity to be heard and both sides uh, get to put their best foot forward and uh, it's just something that I have enjoyed immensely over the year over the years standing up for working families on an equal footing with the immense corporations that we're fighting against and some of these insurance companies and uh, we get an equal chance to be heard and uh, that's a, an effective way to stand up for your rights. Yes, it is. And uh, Tim Holden wants to protect the insurance companies, and you want to protect the people. I think you have your finger on it, John. All right. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Thank you.